Sparky Anderson. Oh, Sparky's good. Sparky, where's Sparky? Here's your mic. Sparky, here. Okay. First of all, I don't I don't roast people. I, I never liked it because if they get home at night, they'll say to themselves, was he talking what he really meant or was he joking? So I've always left that alone. I thought what Stu said about the pitching, Stu, I've heard that a thousand times <laughs> for my pitching. In fact, I had it better than that. I used to, they used to break those fluorescent lights going up the hall. And I loved it. I never looked going to the mound, and I never looked coming back. I wanted the boys to have fun, because as long as they got all that out of them without me seeing it, I couldn't no way find them. I can't find somebody I didn't see do things. So I've heard that many times. You know, I ran into this man 25, 26 years ago. And I thought then, and I still believe, he and me were great partners because we had averages for the year we played in the big leagues that we couldn't even take to a high school team <laughs> and let them see it. So we became pals immediately. We locked in. But let me tell you, we locked in to something that I have always felt. I've always felt if you have a real friend, you don't ever have to hear from them. You don't ever have to hear from a friend. They are your friend no matter what. And this is the way Tony LaRusso is with me. I feel that any time this man calls, I'll answer because he's the type of person that this game has needed. He has given this game so much. And when he goes in the Hall of Fame, I, I know there's going to be tons of you that are going to be there. I know I'm going to live long enough to make it. I, what I do now, I have two things that I watch, T. I watch, I don't look anymore when I go by a cemetery. <laughs> because I went by a couple years ago and they were waving. <laughs> I said, this, this, this here baby's out. We ain't going for that. And the other thing, T, I really watch now. I, I've tricked him a little. The guy has a shovel. That's okay. I don't mind that. But if he's got any dirt in that shovel, no, we ain't going for that either. <laughs> no, in, in all honesty, I think if, if you really look at things, and, and he has every opportunity, it all depends if he wants to do it, the greatest manager ever in the history of the game of baseball, in my opinion, is John McGraw. This man has a chance. If he wants to run it, and Elaine wants to keep him out of the house enough, he can give it a run that he can challenge. He's the only one out there today that can challenge it. And I'll tell you what, he deserves it. He worked hard. He earned it. Yes, he had good players. What kind of players do you think I had? I didn't have too bad. Let me give you a little rundown. Bench, Tony Perez, Joe Morgan, David Conception, Pete Rose, Ken uh, Griffey, Foster, Geronimo. You know, it's amazing. I always thought to win, you had to have good people and good personnel. But then you got to have enough sense to know what you're doing with that personnel. I don't believe I could have. You either got a law school, I could have got in with a 30 IQ. But I, I bless T for having a law degree. At least if he does fail next year or so, he can go back to that. I really appreciate it, and thank you. Sparky Anderson, Sparky Anderson, yes!